have about a thousand billionaires now in America. You know the average tax rate they pay in taxes? 3%, T-H-R-E-E. -E. You know what paid for all this? You've heard me talk a lot about the fact that there were 55 Fortune 500 companies that made $40 billion, didn't pay a single penny in taxes. We did an awful thing. We're paying 15% now. But it paid for everything. Well, anybody who thinks the tax system is fair, raise your hand. All right. We found one millionaire it's right over there. She's not married. Propose to her quickly. Look, guys, the wealthiest America is the biggest corporation. And I come from the corporate capital of the world. Delaware has more corporations incorporated in the state than every other state in the United States of America combined. And I'm a Democrat. And I won seven times for the Senate in that state. It's just paying your fair share and cutting the subsidies for special interests. Why are we subsidizing the oil companies? Why are we, I mean, anyway, under my plan, nobody earning, this was a commitment I made when I started, and I've kept it, and I'll keep it as long as I'm here. No one making less than $400,000 a year is going to pay one single penny extra in federal taxes, not one. And because, and for example, because the law that I worked on for decades and got signed into law last year with the help of your congressional, de de your congressional delegation took on Big Pharma. Now look, we pay the highest prescription drug prices of any nation in the world. Shake your head no, Jack, but I'm telling you it's true. Any nation in the world. Well, guess what? The, down over at the, vet, the Veterans Department, they can negotiate the prices they're going to pay for the drugs that they're going to supply for, the, for our military and me. Because it's a big market. Well, guess what? We've been trying for years and years to make sure that Medicare could negotiate with the drug companies. Well, Medicare finally has the power to negotiate lower drug prices. And with lower drug prices, you know what it's going to do? It's going to save the taxpayers $160 billion a year. Save them. You know why? How many of you know anyone who needs insulin? Because they have type 1. Well, you were paying, but it'd be four to 600 bucks a year, for, a, a month for it, depending on where you're from. Now, because of these folks in front of me here, you don't have to pay more than 35 Dollars. You know why? That's fair for a simple reason. You know how much it costs to make it? The insulin? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Been around for a hundred years. Ten dollars. By the way, there's a couple other provisions there. If your mom or dad, God bless them, are on expensive prescription drugs, and God forbid they get cancer, well, they can pay as much as 14,000 bucks a year for the cancer drugs. They have. Not anymore. Beginning in 2025, guess what? All your drugs, you, you can never have to pay more than $2,000 a year, no matter how much it costs, if you're on Medicare. Because Big Pharma can no longer rip us off by charging exorbitant prices for prescription drugs. In my first two years in office, we brought down the deficit. All this, now you hear my, some of my friends saying Biden's really spent, causing great deficits. I cut the deficit over two years by one trillion seven hundred billion dollars more than any president has in the history of the United States of America. And by the way, the last guy who had this job, he increased it by $2 trillion of deficit. Look, my budget reduces, the budget I've introduced now reduces the deficit by nearly $3 trillion over the next 10 years. But folks, unfortunately, this is not your father's Republican Party. I have gotten, if you, you no reason why you shouldn't know anything about me, but I've gotten on well with my Republican colleagues over the years. For real. Good relationship. 
But this ain't your father's Republican Party. This is what I call the mega Republicans. The mega Republicans in Congress threaten to undo all this progress. They're putting our economy in jeopardy by threatening to refuse to pay America's bills that took 200 years to accumulate now, by the way. Not this year's, last year's. 200 years. They said they're not going to pay the bill, which would, for the first time in America, would default on its, on, its, uh, on its debt, which would throw us not only in recession, but would be a disaster for the economy internationally. They, and they want to cut taxes, cut more taxes for the very large corporations. They want the power we just gave to Medicare to negoci negotiate lower drug prices. They call it a huge giveaway, and they want to they didn't want to eliminate it. They want to, I mean, that's sort of, you just turn on the television, you hear them talk. Or turn on some channels like Fox, you hear them talk. Big Pharma increased the deficit and the cost of uh, 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 the taxpayers by another uh, two billion bucks. Look, based on what we know so far, their plans would explode the deficit, increasing it by more than $3 trillion in the next 10 years. And they also want to cut the investments in clean energy manufacturing and encourage companies to expand and create jobs here. Look, you know, as I said, this clean energy proposal we have, it's $368 billion. Seems like our Republican friends want to cede clean energy future to China, make us dependent on overseas supply chains, export jobs overseas, and weaken our energy security. The MAGA Republicans in Congress also want to cut the CHIPS, the Science Act, stripping our investments for the next generation of science and technology, from biomanufacturing to quantum computing. Take away, get rid of it. That would mean ceding the future of innovation and technology to China. Well, I've got news for my mega Republican friends. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. We're not going to let them undo the progress we've made. Look, let me close with this. I've been determined to make things in this country again, to build manufacturing capacity in America, to make sure we're never again in a position where we're, where, like we were during the pandemic, when we're relying on other countries to make things we need badly at home. Some folks didn't believe we could do that, but we made it. We made no bones about it. I've said for a long time, if we invest in America, we can change the country's future. We have the best scientists in the world. We have the best research universities in the world. We're the most productive workers in the world. When I asked the South Korean country why it was going to invest over $100 billion in the United States, move their semiconductor factories here, you know what they said? You have the best workers in the world and the safest country in the world. That's what the president of the, of the outfit said. But too long, he sat in our hands. How in God's name can we remain the most competitive nation in the world without investing in America? And 30 years ago, we invested 2% of our entire gross domestic product. That's everything we did. 2% of that we invested in research and development, pure research. By the time I came to office, that was down to 0.7%. We're going to turn that around. We're proving it's never been a good bet at big a good bet to bet against America. I've never been more optimistic. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I've never been more optimistic about the future of our country. But just remember, it's just important to remember who we are. We're the United States of America. There is nothing, 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 nothing beyond our capacity. I believe that with every fiber of my being. When we work together, there's nothing can stop us. And that's my intention. Work with whatever will help get this thing moving. God bless you all. May God protect our troops. Thank you.